I'm Kevin Eva, the Editor-in-Chief of Medical Education. One of the things that we've been trying to do for the past few years at the Journal is to take advantage of new technologies to enable authors and readers to uh, do a bit of community building and, and share ideas and insights and uh, things that wouldn't typically make it into the Journal's pages. Uh, we've created uh, podcasts and we've created a discussion board, uh, both of which are accessible through our website, www.mededgex.com. And what you're witnessing now is the first in an effort to uh, create a YouTube channel whereby uh, authors or, or others can uh, share things visually and, and uh, uh, provide, uh, again, more information to, to the readership that they might find useful. Uh, in this first video, you'll see a conversation between uh, Lynn Monroe and Charlotte Reese uh, about some work that they conducted on intimate patient examinations, uh, not specifically about the work itself, but rather about the, uh, the media engagement and the efforts that were uh, required to try to uh, help convey the, the, their findings to, to a lay audience and, and some of the challenges and difficulties that might arise in doing so. I hope you enjoy the video and, and uh, as always, look forward to your feedback on how we might make these, uh, these sorts of activities more useful to you. Uh, please uh, feel free to, to write anytime at uh, med at medadjuke.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and, and again, hope that you enjoy the video. So Lynn, we've obviously both read the newspaper articles um, that have been written on the basis of our paper. Mm. How do you feel about how our paper has almost been restoried in these articles? Yeah, I think it's really interesting the way that it's been sort of represented. And one of the most um, shocking things I found was particularly the the rephrasing of intimate examinations mm. to be called intrusive, intrusive. Yeah, intrusive yeah, yeah. examinations. Yeah. And, and authorised and as well. And, and, and what that tends to feel, I feel that there's, m there's much more sort of negative connotations around the intrusiveness mm. and intruder, mm. you know, that, so it actually sort of suggests that somebody is doing the intrusion rather than intimate examinations, which is much more descriptive. Yeah, sure. I mean, what, what really stood out for me was the words that they missed. And for me, one of the key issues in our paper is that, you know, so, uh, many of the examples, in fact, the patient, um, the students do have consent. Absolutely. But the student thinks that the consent is invalid yeah. in some way. And yeah. in all of those big articles, the word valid had been dropped Completely. off. So there is no, no consent. Yeah, not, absolutely. Not valid consent. And I think that that was one way that the, uh, the media articles really sort of sensationalised the well, story. What did you think, because this is one thing that um, irritated me, because in no, nowhere in the paper do we talk about weak ethics of no, staff, of no, individuals. No. We talk about there being a weak ethical, ethical climate, climate of the medical workplace. So we've gone from a systems cultural perspective in the paper to that being interpreted, extrapolated to individual, individual staff, and that really of me medical sort staff. of wound me up a bit. I think for me the biggest misunderstanding um, was the, the, the assertion in many of the comments that you'd go into hospital for a tonsillectomy <laughs> and have an intimate <coughs> examination, which we, we don't have in our data. All the intimate examinations we were relevant to the surgical procedure that was going on at the time. Do, do you know about the, t the sort of, we were talking about the restoring, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we sort of talked about Chinese whispers. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was, that's where yeah. it's come from, because yeah. it came from one of those, what one person mm. said, uh, and we get into humour now, I went in for a oh, bad yeah, toothache, came out of surgery and my arse hurt. Yeah. How are we going to do this? Again, you know, we've got to get the press release probably a bit more right than we did last time. I think we, I think we need to have it in, in we need to translate anything that we talk about into yeah. newspeak. Newspeak. You know, yeah. you know yeah. the language that the media will use. Yeah. We need to make sure that we're very clear and that we say what it is, but also what it isn't, perhaps. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Let's move on and talk about the comments that um, we've looked at well, we've, from the general public, 
and we've got comments hang on um, from the general public from patients from doctors from other healthcare professionals from people who say that they're family members of doctors and other healthcare professionals from medical students and other students the kind of talk that they use in their um, in, in their comments and something okay. you've raised there about the scapegoating of the doctors because there's an awful lot of talk about doctors as God, as pigs, as offender, as accomplices to crimes and oh, all of this really derogatory talk. There's a lot of Sick, doctor bashing. Twisted, perverted yeah. and disgusted. Dirt bags, grossly overplayed, overplayed <laughs> clowns. That was <laughs> kind of my personal favourite. Um, Fruitcake docs, do yeah. you like that one? Yeah. It's, well, well it, I think this comes down to the multiple levels of restoring that we've got and, and the way that and it's about reconstructed. Someone, yeah. So, you know, we, so the students told us their narratives. We storied their narratives into our paper. Then, you know, that was restoried again into a press release, into um, newspaper articles, magazine yeah. articles, and then it's taken hold of. And, and, and taken um, a, a, a grand narrative, the hero, the villain yeah, absolutely, narrative. Absolutely. So that doctors really in many respects, in became, the comments, are constructed as the villain. They became the they're, villain. They're the villain it's... of the piece. This is what we talk about in the paper when we talk about why do students do this and students' explanations for their behaviour. Well, we have a lot of that in the comments too. And yeah, and, and you, you say there's a tension between students' learning and patient care, mm. but the third one is a tension between students learning patient care and saying yes or no to mm. the clinician mm. who's yeah, doing yeah, the yeah. requesting. Yeah. And you know, we've got one quote which I thought was yeah, quite classic. To say no mm. to senior medical staff is to activate the cone of silence. The cone of silence. Cone of silence, you are forever an outsider. Yeah, 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 yeah. Students yeah. just don't want the boat. Yeah. And as well, the emotion talk was emotion really, talk, yeah. really very strong in the comments. I mean, I've just jotted down here various emotion emotions that come through the comments. And, you know, and these are not... Um, so go on then, tell us. So I've got angry, disgusting, horrified, my jaw just hit the floor, mm -hmm. terrible, not surprised, outrageous, f horrific but not surprising. There's a lot of not surprising. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful. Yeah. Ice cold. I mean, the person was saying, I read this and I was ice cold. Revolting. Creepy, shocked, disturbing, worried. F me dead. You know, there was a lot. There's also a lot of swearing. This is, then this is another thing about how we felt about it because I remember when it first started happening, mm. and I don't know if you remember that that sort of a couple of months ago or whenever. And, and I rang you and said, look what's going on. There's all this ranting going on. Shall we participate? I wanted to stop it. I wanted, to, mm. do you remember that? And yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You were, and I said, no, leave, let it go. Because I, I, I wanted to, to say, no, 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 you've misinterpreted. You're misinterpreting, yeah, yeah. you've got it wrong. Yeah, it, there yeah, was yeah. a lot of stuff around, uh, there were feminist issues coming out. And it was, you know, to me, it wasn't yeah. just a feminist, yeah. feminist issue. Yeah. It was, you know, there, and there were so many things about, once you let this out there, what you know, we, we're encouraged to talk to the public. We're encouraged to engage, engage, and I think it's right that we do, and I think that we will have more greater impact if we do. However, once we do that, mm. it's like a headless beast. We can't, yeah. And I also worry about any negative. I mean. We can't just say it's only had a positive impact. And I wonder hmm. about, you know, I wonder about debates because we talked about debates. Are these debates or are they just uh, single yeah. individual postings of outpourings? Yeah, of most, of them, most of them are single and individual. And, and so, you know, I, I know that we managed to get a, board, a broader debate um, going with sort of authorities and what have you think words were said. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, sure I mean, I think one of the, far, I mean, I think one of the benefits um, that came through the newspaper articles is that those journalists had sought comment yeah. from, for example, the CEO of a consumer yeah. organisation in Australia, 
And, you know, um, and also the head of the Dean's group in Australia, and they'd sought comment from the Aust Australian Medical Association, although their comments weren't in any of the documentation that I could find. Um, and I and I do think that we would have struggled to do that we as researchers. We wouldn't have got because, anywhere. Because the journalists <laughs> have the power, have some power. Well, it's, it's about being out there in the public domain. Yeah. And I think the problem is we've tried it before. We've tried sending our papers yeah, to, and to, we the, just get to top people and it's, you know, yeah. it's glossed over. Once it's in the newspapers, once questions are asked, then they take it more seriously. Yeah.